Right, so this section is on area between two curves. Now, we've already done area before. We know that, you know, integrals are just areas, right? So I know that, you know, if I have a curve that looks like this, right? And if this is A and if this is B, right? Then to find the area underneath, what I do is I take the integral from A to B of f of x dx, okay? What this does is this takes the area between this and the x-axis, right? So it's important to say that this region stops at the x-axis. It goes from the graph to the x-axis. So really, in here, it's not just f of x. Technically, it's we're saying, okay, go from f of x all the way down to the x-axis. What's y at the x-axis? Y is what? Zero. Y is zero, right? So technically, this is the integral f of x dx, I'm sorry, f of x minus zero dx. Okay, that's what we've been doing. So now what we want to do is we want to find the area between two curves. Okay. Okay. The way in which you want to do this is the following. So if f and g are continuous functions, with f of x greater than g of x, so what does it mean f of x is greater than g of x? That means f of x physically sits higher or above the g of x, right? So you have two functions. One of them is above the other one um, throughout a to b. Then the area between the curves is this. That's the area between the curves. So it's f of x minus g of x dx. Okay, simple terms. You have two curves. One sits above the other. To find the area between them, you do integral, higher function, minus lower function, dx. Okay? So upper minus lower dx. So every single... Every single time, you're going to do A to B, upper minus lower dx. Okay. Based on what I saw in the last test, our notation has to get improved a little bit. Our no notation has to improve a little bit. There are some things that are just mathematically not correct to write or to leave out, right? So whenever you have an integral symbol, you have to have it capped with a dx, otherwise it's meaningless, right? So that's one, and then we'll go to some other ones in a little bit. Okay, so, so here if I have f of x minus g of x, I find the area between those two. So let's take a look here. This right here is y in the, you know, when you start algebra one, and then you're in algebra two, and then you're on pre-calc, this is the reason why we make you graph without a calculator and we make you really learn what graphs are function what graphs of functions look like because now you're going to be given two functions you're going to have to graph these and see how they connect to each other okay so what we want to do is we want to find the area of the region between this parabola negative x squared plus 6 so that's this one and y equals x, that's this one, from negative 3 to 2. So let's take a look at where those are. x equals negative 3, that's this point here. Where is that on the graph? Right there. You see how that's a point of intersection? And then from x equals to 2, right there. So I basically want to find the region, the area of the region in between those. Okay, how do we do it? Well, we say area is equal to the integral from negative 3 to 2. The upper function, physically the upper function, minus the lower function, x, 
dx, okay? And then you have to integrate this. So here, more notation. Make sure you're writing this down. So um, this is going to be the integral from negative 3 to 2, negative x squared minus x plus 6 dx. I haven't done anything. I just rewrote them in better order, okay? Now we're going to integrate. So here we go. This is notation. Once you integrate or take an antiderivative, the integral symbol must disappear. So now the integral of this is negative x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus 6x. Okay, here you have got to put this vertical bar negative 3 to 2. Hang on. Um, oh, if you don't put this vertical bar from negative 3 to 2, you are not allowed to plug in any numbers after that, right? So these are things that I, I saw on the test that we need to improve for next time, right? So now, now I plug in the 2. So I get negative 8 over 3 minus 4 over 2 plus 12, okay, minus negative 3 cubed over 3 minus 9 over 2 minus 18, okay, whatever. And then this, you will have, if it's something like this, you'll have a calculator available. Um, and this comes out to 20.833. Okay, yes, question, Ileana? You can do brackets, that I'm fine with. But some people were not doing this at all, and then it's just this expression, and then it's these numbers, and that's not correct progression of notation. Okay? Yeah. You don't need it as long as you do the bookkeeping and like you do the minuses like the rub. Right, yeah. So maybe this should, maybe I should put one. I think I should have put one. But Okay, all right. So here we go, next one. Okay, so this one's not graphed, so we have to graph it. Find the area of the region enclosed by the parabola 2 minus x squared and the line negative x. Okay, so... Um, okay, so negative, so this is y equals negative x squared plus 2. That's another way of writing it, okay? So the vertex is 2. For calculus, what you want to know, like, if, as far as, like, how precise you need to make the graph, the vertex obviously has to be there. And then you want, you should be able to get the x-intercepts in. So how do you find the x-intercepts? You set it equal to 0, right? Negative x squared plus 2 equal to 0. Negative x squared equals negative 2. x squared equals 2. Take a square root. x is plus or minus root 2. Okay, this might be on a non-calculator section. So how much is plus or minus root 2? Well, it's somewhere between a 1 and a 2, right? Yes? Okay, so it's going to be here and here. Whoops, no, here and here. Okay, so that's that. Okay, next I have y equals negative x, and y equals negative x is going to look like this. Ah, oh, what happened? Okay, all right, so that's a rough sketch right now, but we need to now, if we want to find the area in between, we've got to find exactly what the points of intersection are. To find the points of intersection, you have to set the functions equal to each other like this, okay? You have to set the functions equal to each other. Why? Because at this point of intersection, do you see how the y values of the two functions are the same? That's how you find points of intersection. So set the two equal to each other. So we get 
um, 2 minus x squared equals negative x. So let's take everything to the other side. So we get x squared minus x minus 2 equal to 0. Okay, so what's this? x minus 1. No. x plus 1, x minus 2, right? Huh? So they were set equal to each other, but I've set it, I brought everything to the same side and set it equal to zero to solve. So x equals negative one, x equals positive two. So at x equals negative one, there is a point of intersection. And then at x equals positive two, right here, there is a point of intersection. Okay? So now, to find the area, I'm gonna go from negative one to two. 2 minus x squared minus what? So, so this is the top function minus negative x dx. Okay? All right. So look. Lots of times when I give you functions like this, I... Um, you will be allowed to just plug them into your calculator at this stage and then just get the answer, okay? So let's go ahead and try that. Go ahead and take out your calculators. Let's go ahead and just plug that in. Okay. Um. Okay. So, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in in here, right? So integral, you can get the integral symbol from this button to the left of the book, right? It's right here. Like it's, it'll be in a different place for each of you depending on how often you've used it, okay? The one to the left of the book. Where are your calculators? Negative 1 to 2. And then you put in this function. Um, where is it? X squared minus or plus X tab DX. I don't know what happened. Uh, And then here there is a plus x. 4.5 is what you should get. Yes, 4.5. Okay? Right. Okay. So that's how we do that one. Questions on that? Okay. So this one. Yep. Okay. So, correct. So this one, find the area of the region enclosed by the graphs of 2 cosine x and x squared minus 1 using a graphing calculator, all right? So first of all, just by looking at this, um, here is the top function and the bottom function. Which one would you say the x squared minus 1 is? The bottom one. The bottom one, right? So this is y equals x squared minus 1, and this is y equals cosine of x. Okay, that's important for you to note. In this particular problem, we now have to go and find the points of intersection. But if the whole thing was given to you, right, you have to be able to figure out like which one is which. Okay, so let's first, first you have to find the points of integration. Yeah. Oh yes, using the calculator. Okay, so let's graph this. 
We're going to go to the graphing window and then let's type in both of these two cosine x. Make sure you're in radian mode for any of these graphs. And then tab. What's How do I that? change this right now? So if you go, if you take your cursor up to where it says degree and you click, it should change it. If it doesn't, I'll show you the longer way. Okay, so then go. Are you on Scratchpad? No. So go to menu. Right. So go in here. Go into the drop down up there. Settings. Um. And then document settings. And then, are you in Radian? Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, so here we go. So do you see how this middle section is, um, what do you call it? Um, the area in the, like the, what we've got in the diagram? Yes? Okay, you need to find the points of intersection there. So let's go ahead and find the points of intersection. So go to Menu, Analyze Graph, Intersection, and let's do the left one and that's what you get negative 1.265 so did you start in the middle and work your way up yeah just it doesn't matter where you start just start on one side of it and then like drag to the other side so it contains that point so this is negative 1.265 what's the other point of intersection 1.265 so now we have to write our integral, okay? And it's gonna be the top function, two cosine x, minus the bottom function from negative 1.265 to positive 1.265, okay? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, you just take the x. Oh, so um, hover on top of the point, on, on top of the number, and click the plus button. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, so now take a look at what we're going to do. We're actually going to find the area of this with the calculator, okay? Um, so here's what we're going to do. In here, in this, everybody do this with me. Go to menu, analyze graph and you want to find the bounded area. Do you see that? So that's the good thing about TI Inspire. It's menu-based, so you really know what you're looking for. Bounded area. And now it says lower bound. When you try to drag, it kind of glitches out. So, um, but le instead, let me see. Um, instead, go ahead and type in negative one point what was it two six five enter so you see where it says lower bound just type in negative one point two six five enter and then when it says upper bound type in one point two six five enter and it finds the area for you right there right and it should be four point nine nine five okay so that is four point nine nine five and that's all you would need to show Yep. Questions? Okay. So, is it good? Huh? Yeah. Yep. For the homework, you can use your calculators. Okay. So now, okay, before, hang on, before we move on, let's look at this highlighted region here. If I'm at any point in this region, no matter what point I am in this region, the curve above is the cosine, the curve below is the x square minus 1, yes? No matter where I am. However, take a look at this next one. Now, the region is this, 
right? This entire thing is the region. So when I'm here, what's above, what curve is above? That blue one, right? What is below me? The x-axis. Do you guys see that? But when I'm here, what curve is above me? The blue one. But what's below me? The red one. Do you see how, depending on where I am in the region, my borders are not consistent, like they're not constant. Do you see how the boundaries are changing? When that happens, you have to split up your region and do two separate problems, okay? So here, where would be a good place to split the region? At two right here, okay? So now, let's see what curves these were even. So we have, we have to find the region, the area of the region R in the first quadrant, that is bounded above by y equals root x. That's this one. And it's bounded below by the x-axis. Where is the x-axis? This is the x-axis. What's the function for x-axis? y equals what? Zero. And then also the line y equals x minus two. So now I got to do two integrals. One for this and another one for the next one. So area is gonna be, so the first one goes from x is zero to x is two, root x minus zero dx, plus two to four, root x minus x minus two dx, okay? Now, Nobody writes the root x minus zero, right? So you could just do like, I mean, nobody writes the minus zero, so you could just do root x, okay? And then you, you can just plug that into your calculator and find the answer, okay? So um, why don't we do this? Okay, hang on, Yuval and like Eliana and you guys, can you guys plug in just the first integral? And then here, Tara and then to this side, can you guys all plug in the second integral? Just do it in the home screen. Don't graph it. Do it in um, do it in this home screen. Wait, one point eight eight six for the for one of them. What's another one? 1.448 for the other one. Good. And together, 3.334. Okay? Fabulous. 1.4. Okay? You have to go to three decimal places, so make sure your calculators go to three decimal places. Okay, let's move on. Um, okay, so now, of course, you know, this was too easy, so now we need to switch things up. I mean, not that it'll get harder, but just a different variation, right? Because we have to allow for, like, all the situations. Okay, take a look at this one. Integrating with respect to y. So all of the ones that we did here, we were kind of going vertically, right? Top to bottom, and then dx. So let's just think a little bit about what it is that we were doing. When we first started to do areas and integrals, Remember how we first started by doing Riemann sums? How did we do uh, an area with a Riemann sum? What did we draw underneath? Like when we did LRAM and RRAM, what did we do? Remember we drew rectangles underneath? I'm so Sorry, it's Riemann. Okay, LRAM and RRAM. Remember we, we were drawing like rectangles underneath? And then when we did the rectangles, how do we find the area of them? So we found the height which is this minus that now, right? That's the height. Times the thickness, that's dx, right? So this, root x, times the thickness, this is dx, and then the integral just adds them all up, and that's how we found the area. Okay, so now take a look at this. Here we have a little bit of an issue because, okay, if I want to find the region here, the area of the region here, if I'm on the left, right, okay, I have this function like g of y at the top and the bottom. 
But if I'm on the right side, do you see how the boundaries are now different? So do you see how this is a problem where I have to split it up and do two integrals? Except, well, you would split it like in the center, right? Except, now you think, wait, that's if I had my rectangles vertically. But if I have my rectangles drawn horizontally, then no matter where the rectangle is, the, t the right and left boundaries are always the same, right? So in that case, I switch things up and I do it with respect to y. So now, when it's this way, when it's set up this way, I do the right function, or the function to the right, minus the function to the left, but now what's the thickness? This is no longer dx. This is now dy. And I have to go from the y boundaries. y equals c to y equals d. And now you're like, oh my gosh, Miss Malikian, I had just started to make sense of this, and now it all doesn't make sense again, yeah. which, yes, I completely agree with you. This was some of the most like dizzying stuff that I had to learn how to do, right? So, you can rotate it. I mean, you could, I mean, you know, sometimes it's just, once you get the hang of it, it's so much less work. So take a look, remember this? This is our buddy from the last problem, okay? Where we had to split it up. But look, if I went this way, no matter where I am, the left and right boundaries are always the same thing, right? It's always the red one here, and it's always the blue one here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to solve each of the equations for x. So here's what we're gonna do. So remember the first equation was y equals root x? How do I solve that for x? Take a square root, I'm sorry, square both sides. So I have x squared equals No, sorry. X is y squared. Oh my gosh, sorry. X is y squared. Okay? What about the other one? Y equals x minus 2. So x is y plus 2. Okay, so to do this, functions must look like this. Okay, so functions must look like x equals something. Okay, now, let's take an integral. Which of these functions, the red or the blue, is further to the right? The red. So it'll be y plus 2 minus, which one is further to the left? y squared. Okay? N no. Now, here, I could... You see how this is all like y, y? So here it must say dy. And we're going to go from the y values. What's the lowest y value? Zero, zero. zero to two. OK? And then you put that in your calculator, and sure enough, you get the same answer. Because it's the same area. Right? It's the same area. Like if I was painting this area, would it matter if my brush went this way or that way? No. Okay? So that's how we integrate with respect to y. Okay. Um, let's do the very last one and then we'll be done. So take a look at this next one. You have to find the area of this, right? Your first bet is, you know what? I'm going to do it the, the way I learned it first. I'm just going to go from top to bottom. But you see how that's not consistent. Because here, if you go top to bottom, it's red versus red. Here, it's red versus blue. You have to split it up, do two integrals. That's a pain in the neck. As opposed to, if you go left minus right, or right minus left, do you see how no matter where you are, it's blue on the left, red on the right, the other way, right? Okay, so that's how we're going to do it. However, we have to... Okay, so which function up here, which is the blue function? The y equals x cubed or the y squared minus 2, do you think? 
Right. So that's the blue function. We have to solve it for x. So x is cube root y. Right? Okay. And then this is the red one. Oh my gosh, it's already solved for x. So that's great. Okay, so let's do the integral. Tell me, which one goes first in the integral? Blue or red? Blue. Why blue? Right minus left. Why right minus left? It always has to be the greater minus the smaller. Look at the numbers along the y-axis. These numbers are the greater numbers, right? So greater minus smaller. Okay, so what is it? Cube root of y? Minus y squared minus 2. Dx or dy? dy? Dy. What um values do I put here? Zero. Right, x equals negative 1. Okay, to that number. Okay, so what's that number? Let's try to find it on the calculator. Okay, let's graph these. Do you know how to graph relations? Okay, <clears throat> go to the graphing menu or... Um, So x equals negative 1 at the point of intersection. You look at, the, oh. yeah, y equals negative 1 is what I mean. Um, sorry. Okay, so here, okay, go to this menu. Um, so if you're in the scratch pad, clear the scratch pad. You can do that by pressing the button dock and then B. Or you can do clear, but okay. Sure, just clear, yeah, like whatever, however you can clear it, just clear them. Okay, so here's what we want to do. Um, pre if, okay, right here, don't go like button happy. If you just press delete once, it gives you this menu. Don't press too many times because then you mess things up. Now go to relation. Okay, now you can type in x equals cube root of y. What's y? Okay, everybody get that? Press enter. Okay? Now do tab. It should be a relation again, so you can type in the other one. X equals y squared minus 2. Yeah. No, just press tab. It should give you the relation menu already. And now you should get these, and this is just a mess, so I'm gonna drag these away. Cube root is control, and then two buttons. Okay, yes, but now it'll, it'll, so we just need like the left, the right one, right? So menu, analyze graph, this is gonna be a little bit different. Intersection, oh, I guess not. Lower bound, upper bound, go up. Do you get something like this, or? Yeah. Right. So which of these numbers are we going to get? The y. the y. Yep. Okay, hang on. So this is going to be 1.793. I'll do it again. But then when you then graph, I'm sorry, when you then integrate with your calculator, like do you see how you can't even do this by hand, right? Like who's going to plug in 1.793 after you integrate? That's just silly. So then we get 4.215. Okay, so let's do plugging in again. So let me just clear these, doc B. Um, and let me just, okay, so you're here, huh? I press, if you press doc B, it clears it if you're in the scratch pad. Okay, so in here, you press the delete button once and it gives you this menu. You want relation, and then you just type in whatever you want. X, yeah, x equals cube root of y. And so this is x equals, the equal button is under control. And then control and this button underneath for the cube root of y. Enter. Oh. 
Yeah, after you press in, yeah, after you do the, and then you do it again. Yeah, then do tab. It should already give it to you in relation, and you can do that. What's the difference if I just do it with the Y equals